Welcome to lecture 17. In today's lecture, we will quantify how long it takes for a reaction to reach equilibrium. This lecture will be broken down into two parts. In the first part, we will introduce equilibria into rate law expressions and solve the integrated rate law expression to quantify how long it takes for a system to reach equilibrium. In the second part, we will quantify how long it takes for a reaction to return to equilibrium after a temperature change is applied to the system. All forward reactions are accompanied with backward reactions. Consider the following reaction where A is in equilibrium with B, where the rate constant for the forward direction is Kf, and the rate constant in the reverse direction is Kr. The rate law expression for the forward direction is equal to Kf times the concentration of A, while for the reverse direction it is equal to Kr times the concentration of B. Since the consumption of A is dependent upon the concentration of A, and the formation of A is dependent upon the concentration of B, we can write the net change in the concentration of A as being equal to Kr times the concentration of B minus Kf times the concentration of A. Now that we have this rate law expression, let's use it to then start to examine what this system is doing in f as a function of time. Meaning, let's start looking at how these two components, component A and component B, which are in equilibrium, how they change as we approach equilibrium. And so this is going to be a multi-step type problem where the first step is just simply we have this rate law expression here that we saw on the previous slide and then what we're going to do is we're going to determine the integrated rate law expression for both the concentration A and the concentration of B and what we're going to assume is that the initial concentration of B is going to be equal to zero and that's to simplify this problem. But then once we know the integrated rate law expressions, we can then plot these two concentrations as a function of time, and we can start to examine how long it takes for these systems to get to equilibrium. Starting first with the integrated rate law expression, I'm just going to start by writing down just the rate law. So we have the rate of change of the concentration of A as a function of time, and that's equal to the rate constant in the reverse direction times the concentration of B minus the rate constant in the forward direction times the concentration of A. And like it says in the setup for the problem, since we're going to set up our system such that the initial concentration of B is equal to zero, then what that means is that our concentration of B as a function of time is simply going to be the concentration or the initial concentration of A minus whatever the concentration of A is at any given time. And that's just because in our equilibrium expression, we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So for every one mole of A that's consumed, we get one mole of B that's produced. And so what that allows us to do is to write this expression here, where we can write the concentration of B simply as a function of the concentration of A. So if we plug that into our rate law expression, we have the rate of change of the concentration of A, and that's equal to the reverse rate constant, and then I'm going to multiply by the initial concentration of A minus the concentration of A. From that, I'm still going to subtract the rate constant in the forward direction times the concentration of A. If I distribute in my rate constant, my reverse rate constant, change in concentration of A by the change in time, and that's equal to the reverse rate constant times the concentration of, for the initial concentration of A minus the rate constant in the reverse direction times the concentration of A, and from that I'm still going to subtract off the rate constant in the forward direction times the concentration of A. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute out this concentration of A term, and what that leaves me with is the rate of change of the concentration of A being equal to the reverse rate constant times the initial concentration of A minus the concentration of A times the reverse rate constant plus the forward rate constant. At this stage, we can actually set up our integrals now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying, I'm going to start isolating my variables. So here I've got deconcentration of A, and I'm going to multiply so that my right-hand side is going to have my dt. And so all that means is that I'm just taking my dt term, and I'm just going to just multiply both sides by dt so I have it on my right-hand side. Because I've got this whole portion here that has to do with the concentration of A, well, I need to move all of it to the left-hand side because I can't actually isolate for my concentration of A at all. So what that means is that I'm going to have here in my denominator Kr times the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of A times Kr plus Kf. And then I'm just going to take the integral of both sides. 
my right hand integral, well that's just from 0 to t, and my left hand integral, that's just going to be from the concentration of a naught, so my initial concentration, to whatever my concentration is at any given time t. And now to evaluate this integral on the left hand side, I'm going to use integration by substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u be equal to kr times the concentration of a naught minus the concentration of a times kr plus kf. So basically everything here in my denominator, I'm just going to let that equal to u. My du by d concentration of a, well that's just going to be equal to, in my first term here, I can see that there's no function of concentration of a, so that's just basically equal to zero. And from that, I'm going to be subtracting off. Well, here I've got a concentration of A times a constant. So what that leaves me with when I take the derivative with respect to the concentration of A is just Kr plus Kf. And so what this means in the end, then, is when I rearrange to find what is my small change in concentration of A, when I rearrange, it's just equal to du divided by the negative of Kr plus Kf. And so it is these two terms where the first one is u and the second one is this term that has to deal with d concentration of a that I'm going to stick back into my expression here on the left hand side and this is again just to simplify this integral that we're about to do. So let's now apply this substitution and let's start to evaluate this integral. By applying this substitution I'm also going to be changing my bounds of integration on my left hand side integral and so I'm going to write them in terms of u which means that I'm basically just going to be substituting in the concentration of a naught anytime I see the concentration of a inside my substitution because that's my, my independent variable in this integral. And so that means that my integral starts from kr times the concentration of a naught minus the concentration of a naught times kr plus kf and that on the upper bound of my integral, I'm now just going to substitute in the concentration of A into my U term, wherever I see concentration of A. So meaning I'm just going to write in that exact same expression. Kr times the concentration of A naught minus the concentration of A times Kr plus Kf. And then I'm going to make my substitutions, meaning that since this whole denominator here in this term, that's what I said equal to U. So I'm just going to write 1 over U and I have my dA in my numerator here. Well, my d times the concentration of A is just going to be equal to du times 1 over, or sorry, du over minus kr plus kf. And that's still going to be equal to this integral from 0 to t of dt. This integral now is actually pretty trivial because what I have is essentially an integral of du over u. And since the minus kr plus kf is a constant, then that can come straight out in front. And so that's why I'm going to write it straight out in front, since it's just two constants, and they don't play anything in the integral. And like I said, the integral of du over u, well, that's just the integral or the natural logarithm of u. And since I'm writing this in terms of my this, this substituted coordinates, then I'm just going to then just write in my bounds using the same coordinate system, kr times the concentration of a naught minus the concentration of a naught kr plus kf, and on top my upper bound is kr times the concentration of a naught minus the concentration of a naught kr plus kf. And what that's equal to here on my right hand side, well my integral of dt is just simply equal to t, and that's evaluated between 0 and t. So now if I apply my fundamental theorem of calculus, what we end up with is 1 over the negative kr plus kf, and I have my natural logarithm of, well I have my upper bound which is kr times the concentration of a naught minus the concentration of a times kr plus kf. And from that I'm going to subtract off the natural logarithm of kr times the concentration of a naught minus the concentration of a naught times kr plus kf. And on my right hand side I have t minus 0 when I evaluate the fundamental theorem of calculus for that term. Now all we have to do is just simplify this expression. And so my first step in this simplification is I'm just going to group together my natural logarithm terms. 1 over the negative of kr plus kf. And I can write this natural logarithm term or this difference in natural logarithm terms as the division of the two pieces, meaning the natural logarithm of kr concentration of a naught 
minus the concentration of A times Kr plus Kf divided by Kr concentration of A naught minus the concentration of A naught times Kr plus Kf and that's going to be equal to T. My next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now start to simplify some of these terms and move some stuff around. First of all, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative Kr plus Kf. And so what that leaves me with is minus Kr plus Kf times T on my right-hand side. What I'm also going to do is I'm also going to distribute in this concentration of A naught into my denominator and then I'm going to factor it out. So what that means is I'm going to have the natural logarithm of Kr concentration of A naught minus the concentration of A Kr plus Kf and that's going to be over the concentration of A naught and since I've distributed it out I'm just left with Kr minus Kr minus Kf since I'm now also distributing in this minus sign. So that goes into both of these terms here. What that leaves me to do then is I'm able to cross off these KRs on the bottom. And so what I'm left with here on the bottom is natural logarithm of KR, concentration of A naught minus the concentration of A times KR plus KF divided by the negative of KF times the concentration of A naught and that's equal to the negative of Kr plus Kf times T. It's always more convenient to be able to solve for these expressions in terms of the concentration of the thing that you're trying to find, in this case the concentration of A, and that way then we can easily then see how does the concentration of A vary in time. So I'm going to continue to work on this to solve for this concentration of A. That means my next step is to take the exponent of both sides and so the exponent of a natural logarithm just cancels out both of those terms, which means I have Kr times the concentration of A naught minus the concentration of A times Kr plus Kf, and that's divided by negative Kf over the concentration of A naught. And since I have to apply the exponent onto the right-hand side, then that means I get E raised to the power of negative Kr plus Kf times time. And then after that, I'm just going to start to rearrange and simplify. What that means is then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative Kf over A0, which means I have Kr times the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of A times Kr plus Kf, and that's equal to negative Kf concentration of A0 e raised to the power of negative Kr plus Kf times time. Continuing along on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides by Kr times A0, and then I'm going to multiply through by minus 1. What that leaves me with is the concentration of A times Kr plus Kf being equal to Kr times A0 plus Kf times A0 e raised to the power of negative kr plus kf times t. And for my final step, I'm going to do two things. The first thing is I'm going to distribute out this concentration of A0. And the second thing is that I'm going to divide both sides by kr plus kf. And so what that leaves me with is my concentration of A being equal to my concentration of A0 over Kr plus Kf, and that is going to be all multiplied by Kr plus Kf times E raised to the power of negative, and then Kr plus Kf times T.